Hello boys, welcome to The Rock. The Dark Rock Elite, that is. I just finished watching The Rock and this intro isn't working, is it? What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before I get onto the overview, to have full disclosure, Be Quiet did send me this cooler to test and review, but all opinions are 100% mine. So if you do end up liking the video and find it helpful, how about giving me a thumbs up? And if you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel? I would like to take a minute and thank my patrons for supporting the channel. Thank you very much. If you'd like to support the channel directly through Patreon, the link is down in the description. Okay, just so everyone understands, there are two new Dark Rock coolers, the Elite and the Pro 5. Be Quiet was kind enough to actually send me both of these coolers to take a look at, so I will quickly go over the differences. The first main difference is the front fans. The Elite has a custom 135mm fan, while the Pro 5 has a modified Silent Wings 4 120 PWM fan. The modification being that the fan on the Pro 5 is spinning 400 RPM faster than a standard Silent Wings 4 fan. The next main difference is the center fan. Although they look much the same, the Elite's fan is spinning at a, or does have a max rated RPM of 2000, and while the Pro 5's has a max rated RPM of 1700. Plus the Elite has the ARGB ring around the center, while the Pro 5 has no ARGB whatsoever. Those are the three main differences of these coolers. Uh, the heat sinks are the same, uh, besides the rails that are on the front of the Elite that do hold that custom 135 millimeter fan. Uh, those rails do have a notch system. I think like that's the best way I can describe it. Um, so they aren't free uh, sliding or whatever, and you just tighten it wherever you need to. There are like specific notches. Uh, I'll show some B-roll of what I'm talking about so that you have a better understanding and hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's go over what comes in the box of the Dark Rock Elite. There is the heatsink and fans, of course. There is an installation guide, a Phillips 2 screwdriver, a plastic cover that is magnetic, mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, and a small tube of thermal compound. The dimensions of the Dark Rock Elite with the fans attached is 168 millimeters high, by 136 millimeters wide by 146 millimeters deep. With the front fan at this height, there will be 38-ish millimeters of RAM clearance. You can obviously slide the front fan up to increase RAM clearance, but you do need to remember that you need to add in how much ever higher you slide the fan to the overall cooler clearance or the CPU cooler clearance of your case. Taking a look at just the heatsink, it is a twin tower cooler with seven six millimeter continuous copper heat pipes. Both fin stacks are 114 millimeters and consist of 45 aluminum fins. Both the fins and the heat pipes have been coated in a black ceramic coating. The cold plate is copper with the bottom of the cold plate having a nickel plating. The rear face of the heatsink has an interesting design cut into the fins. So there is that to kind of make it look pretty from an angle that you'll never really see it at. All of this has the weight of this heatsink at 828 grams, which is 10 grams more than the Pro 5's heatsink. And that's because of the two front rails that are on the front of this heatsink. Now for the fans, both fans have seven blades. The center fan has a four pin PWM connector plus a female connector, while the front fan has a male connector so the two fans will actually run off of the one four pin PWM connector coming from the center fan. Both fans have a max rated RPM of 2000. Both fans have a fluid dynamic bearing. The center fan does have a manual switch with an S and a P on it, along with the ARGB LEDs connected to the center fan. Taking a look at the PWM range of these fans. So with the fans attached to the heatsink and the fan header, set to 100% PWM, and the switch in P mode. The motherboard is showing the RPM of these fans at 1950-ish. Dropping the PWM down to 50%, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1110-ish. 
dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is showing the RPM at just under 400. Bringing the fan header back up to 100% PWM, but this time having the switch in the S mode, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1460-ish, so a 500 RPM difference between the S and the P mode. And that's it for the PWM range. Now taking a look at the LEDs of the Dark Rock Elite, Be Quiet has not provided an ARGB hub, so you will need a 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard to use these LEDs, or you'll need to go buy your own ARGB hub. If you're plugging the 5 volt 3 pin 5050 connector into your motherboard, you will need to download the software for your motherboard's ARGB software. Kind of goes without saying, I would think, but I am saying it. Now, I do personally like the minimalistic look of the ring, of that it does look nice. Uh, the colors look pretty good. It is bright enough for a medium lit room. And really, other than that, I don't really know what else to say. So moving right along to socket compatibility. The Dark Rock Elite is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets, but it is not compatible with the HPC lineup. For AMD, it's compatible with AM4 and AM5, but not Threadripper. Moving on to how to install the CPU cooler, I will be installing it onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between some Intel and AMD sockets may be pretty similar, but if you are planning to install this cooler onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch you can use the box that your motherboard came in. You will need a PH2 screwdriver, which Be Quiet has provided. You should also have some isopropyl alcohol and something to wipe with. To install this cooler onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. With the CPU installed into the motherboard, Place the backplate flat on the mat, then align the mounting holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. With the motherboard flat on the backplate, find the AMD mounting screws, the plastic spacers, as well as the mounting bars. Place the spacers over the standoffs of the backplate, then place the mounting screws through the holes on the mounting bars. Now making sure the mounting bars are facing in, align the screws to the holes in the spacers. Then fasten the screws to the backplate. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with the isopropyl alcohol. Then you want to apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now make sure to remove the fans from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the screws on the fastening bar. Then screw the two screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. When that's done, you can install the fans back onto the heatsink. Make sure to connect the front fan to the center fan and then have that fan connector from the center fan go into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. As well, don't forget to plug in the 5 volt ARGB connector to the 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard. And that's the installation. Before I move on to the temperature testing though, if you are finding this video helpful, could you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links that are in the description. All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a very small kickback at no added cost to you. With that out of the way, on to the temperature testing. If you do have any questions on how I test the coolers, please watch my cooler testing methodology video where I go over the how and what of all my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card along the top and I will also have it linked down in the description. In the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test, the Dark Rock Elite had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 71.4 C, which has it matching the Celsius S24, which is a 240 millimeter AIO. Then in the 87 watt full speed test, the CPU's average steady state temperature was at 70.7C, which has it matching the Frost Commander 140 and the NHD15. Moving on to the 150 watt noise equalized test, the Dark Rock Elite performed very well, again matching the NHD15, with the CPU's average steady state temperature being 75.1C. Then in the full speed 150 watt test, it matched the Frost Commander 140 
and was only bested by the two 360 millimeter AIOs. Now I tested a few additional settings or setups as well. I tested with only the center fan, which may help with ramp clearance issues depending on your situation. Plus I tested with the switch set to S mode. So with only the center fan and the switch set to P mode, was able to match the 35 dBA test in both noise level and in CPU temperature with a temperature of 75 C. Then at full speed and the switch set to S mode, had the cooler be very quiet and just a bit warmer than the 35 dBA test with the CPU's average steady state temperature at 75.8 C. Now here's the sound recordings of this cooler with the settings or setups, but first the ambient room noise for your reference. So what do I think of the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite? It's a good performing cooler. It performed well and was quiet while running at full speed. It also performed very well when running at 35 dBA. But what you and or we need to understand or keep in mind is that this cooler does cost 100 to 115 USD depending on where you live, which is a good bit of monies, like a good bit of monies. Plus, you'll likely need a pretty big case because for most situations, this thing's going to be at 170 millimeters or higher based off of your RAM clearance. To, so to have a CPU cooler clearance of over 170 millimeters, you do need a pretty large case because this is a pretty big boy cooler. And I feel that's its biggest issue is its size, which is one of the reasons why it does perform so well but it really does limit on how many people can actually use this cooler in their case. Not like you typically have to have an expensive case to fit something in around 170 plus millimeter CPU cooler clearance, which like I get that like you're paying a lot of money for the cooler. You should be paying a lot of money for the case, but yeah, th that's the biggest issue I can see. Not to say that's really all, like a big issue. It should be an issue that's understood to get this kind of performance. So yeah, just to wrap it up, I think it is a good looking, well-performing cooler. So if you are okay with paying that much money and you are able to fit it into your case, the Dark Rock Elite will do you pretty well. And I'll just leave it at that because yeah. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Uh, there is the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join and I do put up my charts for my coolers, case fans, and cases up on the HFG Discord server so you can see whatever is the most current charts. Uh, there's also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.